Welcome back guys. This is Derek Kirby with the Dallas Prospect and we are running today a new, basically a new show here. This is essentially the post post game or in keeping with the fun loving spirit of the recent Shaq comments reiterating again on KP needing to post up more. We're officially going to start calling this down on the block or Mavs on the block. I like down on the block a little bit better because it's more to the point. But this is a Mavs post-game, post-game show, rather post-post-game. And uh, the idea is that last night after the game, you got my immediate reaction and my immediate analysis to it. So this, with a little bit of more time to process everything, more great information to glean and gather, now I can come in and I can actually give a little bit more to hopefully enhance the overall experience. If this works, if this is popular, we'll try and run this, certainly after Maverick wins as often as we can, but let's just see. So, first in the house, shout out to, let's see, Peculiar, you're new, or at least new in the comments that I, I think. And then we got Gle, what's good? OG, what's up? OG Stone Man, rather. Matt Caldwell, what's good? Uh, so let's jump in here. So obviously, in the Mavericks win last night, we talked a lot about how the Mavericks showed a lot of growth. The areas of their greatest weakness, typically the third quarter and the clutch time, they performed admirably in both of those areas. And it really turned kind of the, it, it turned the tide in the game. And it showed a lot of grit that I think this team really needs. Now it's worth noting I don't necessarily think that the team we see it as today is going to be the same roster we see, you know, in a couple years around Luka and KP. I think there's going to be a lot of mixing and matching. There's certainly still defensive liabilities out there, although it is worth noting you have found something, and certainly in the value department, in guys like Maxi Kleba and Dorian Finney-Smith, both of which were undrafted free agents. As such... We're going to focus on how we can kind of put everything else together, how we can get those role players and those guys I labeled as X factors actually playing up to snuff. You know, Seth comes back from his calf strain. He doesn't look quite right, but even still, they got enough from unexpected sources. We talk about how that third man tends to float around that role, kind of floats around the team. Sometimes it's Seth, sometimes it's Tim Hardaway Jr. In fact, I would say often it's Tim Hardaway Jr. But instead, you got a career game at a Dorian Finney-Smith, a career-high 27 points, career-high six made threes, including a couple in overtime. When the Mavericks were down seven in the final couple minutes, Dorian Finney-Smith was a huge part of that. Obviously, Luka carving up the defense, dishing out just insane vision, pinpoint precision passes, despite the fact that he was getting knocked around, really opened things up. But there's a lot to process here. And there's some other things that come out of this as well. Luca, for instance, put forward um, a stat line that's never been seen in NBA history. Let me find this here. I believe it was Chuck Cooperstein on Twitter who called this out. Let me see here. Yes, yeah, so Chuck Cooperstein on Twitter says, we're less than two years into it, it being Doncic's career in the NBA, and I'm not sure what other superlatives we can throw out there. Never before has the game of at least 36 points, 14 rebounds, and 19 assists been seen in the NBA. And that's 74 years of history we're talking about. That stat line has never been done until Luka Doncic last night. Tremendous, tremendous production in that standpoint. But you know what? Even in some of these other roles, some guys that you can't overlook, I already talked about Dorian Finney-Smith's great career night. KP, man, he deserves some love as well because while his stat line didn't necessarily blow you away, it's still solid production. And as Mavs PR points out on Twitter, uh, he just put together a 26 and 11 game here. This is his 10th 25 point, 10 rebound game over the last 20. For context, he had eight in his first 222 games of his career. KP in Dallas is a different animal. If he was a unicorn before, I don't know what the hell you call him now, but he is realizing his potential alongside Luka. And now that you got both of them averaging 30 in the bubble, 
maybe KP is a tick under it now because I want to say he was like 30.3 and then just had 26 in uh, this last game. But basically 30 points a piece out of both of them. You're completely unlocking the potential of what this team can be going forward. Uh, let me see here. Also in this, you have a lot of interesting focus. I mentioned in the show last night, the MVP has not been announced, but the finalists are there. It's, it's Harden, it's Giannis, and it's LeBron. I'm not shocked by that, but at the same time, I think Luka deserves more love and a lot of the promotional stuff you saw, different sites like Clutch Points and Bleacher Report and all of them sharing, hyping up the announcement of the three finalists. You didn't even see Luka in the graphic. You saw Damian Lillard in his place. And Dame is a great player, but he's not had the same production as Luka on a winning team like Luka. So maybe that was Luka's little statement last night in that game with a career-high 19 assists, which is insane. And the fact that he you know, splits through his legs on that last assist there, the and one dunk to Maxi with a minute left in overtime in, in a you know five or four point game, whatever it was, just utter insanity to be able to do that. Meanwhile, Luka is getting discussed in the most improved player category. Now, I talked about this. He's 7.8 points per game better than last season. His rebounds have jumped nearly three rebounds a game from 6.7 to 9.5. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. That's his assist numbers from 6.7 to 9.5. And his rebounds from 8.7 to 10.1. Uh, Devontae Graham is probably his best competition there although there's other contenders as well ingram certainly is deserving but in graham's case he jumped seven points per game from 11.6 to 18.6 from 6.4 assists to 7.7 and from 3.4 rebounds to 3.5 nice improvement for sure but it's pretty clear pretty clear that luca's leap has been greater the thing is in this case Today, Mavs Facebook points out Graham's not a finalist. Interesting. Well, I don't know why then that Luca's got this comment because when asked about this last night, Brad Townsend asked about the uh, the voting for most improved player. Luca basically said, "Take me off the list. Put Devonte Graham on there." So that's what it is. He's saying to put Graham in his place on the list. That makes more sense. So my mistake there, but. Luca essentially saying, take me off the list, put Devontae Graham on there. He says, I don't deserve to be on there. I don't know if deserve is the right word. I think Luca's perspective on that is I want to be, you know, I, I would, if I was in the MVP thing, I'm not saying take me off that, but I think he's looking at it as he's doing what he feels is expected of him and therefore it doesn't feel quite the same. So yeah, it's interesting there because I hadn't even really put that much thought into the idea of Luca being on the most improved player list because I was focusing on him in the MVP context, understanding that he would probably come in third or fourth. But, you know, it is what it is. Interesting here as well from Mavs, uh, pivoting back to the game here, interesting as well from Mavs PR on Twitter. They point out, as I mentioned last night, they swept the Bucks on the season. The Bucks have the best record in the NBA this year. They are the number one defense by a comfortable margin this year, statistically. Mavs PR points out, this marks the first time in franchise history that the Mavericks have swept the eventual team with the best winning percentage in the NBA, tied or outright in a single season. So very, very rare territory here for the Mavericks. And you know, it's two very different games. They were nothing alike each other. The Mavericks never had a home court game. First time they had to play without Luka, and then the second time they had Luka, but they still were not in the same position, um, being that it was a neutral court. And, you know, some people might suggest that Milwaukee not having as much to play for at this point because they've already locked up their positioning. I didn't look at Milwaukee last night and think that they weren't trying by any means. This was not a, hey, they took their eye off the ball kind of thing. If that had been the case, Dallas would have run away with it at times. Milwaukee was absolutely being very physical with Luka, knocking him to the ground several times, roughing him up, and they were trying to take him out of his game. Likewise, they were trying to make life hard on KP where they could, and they kept rallying back. Every time Dallas would start to pull away, they would reel him in. 
And then at times, Milwaukee would establish a lead and Dallas would have to come clawing back. So I don't think of this this way. Now you could say, hey, the Mavericks were a hungrier team. It meant more to them. But I don't think, I think there's a difference between saying a game meant more to one team than the other and saying the team didn't care at all. I think there's a very big difference there and a distinction that can't be overlooked in that case. Let's see, let's see, what else? This is from ESPN Stats and Info. Luka Doncic created 45 points from his assist on Saturday night, the second most by a player in a game this season, only behind LeBron's 47 against the Magic on January 15th. Luka is the only player to create 40 points off assists in multiple games this season. It is absolutely incredible the kind of work that he put into this game, what he was able to do. He was dominating in big moments in this game. He was taking all of the contact. He wasn't letting it really frazzle him. Now, he took a shot to the face uh, late in the fourth quarter that wasn't called, and you kind of felt like maybe there it had a tendency where previously you might have seen him kind of, I don't know if sulk is the right word, but you would have seen him be bothered by that, distracted by that, and let it get him out of his rhythm. And instead, it felt like he really tried to answer just with his play. It's great when a player can get angry and actually focus that anger and be aggressive. And whereas Luca could have easily been forced into more step back threes or difficult shots, I felt like he kept attacking. He kept going into the teeth of the defense, basically saying, Yo, I'm getting to the rim, and I'm going to make three or four guys collapse down on me for easy spot-up wide-open threes, so much so that even guys that aren't known as great three-point shooters, although Dorian has stepped up significantly this year, are, are going to be finding these shots very, very makeable. Even a guy like Tim Hardaway Jr., who has been in a funk throughout the bubble, save for the first game, uh, even he was able to get one knocked down because he was getting great Great looks here. On his play earlier, where he, I mentioned earlier, he splits between his legs, the bounce pass to Maxi for the end, one dunk. Huge moment there. Tim McMahon gets the quote from Luca after the game, asking about the play itself. Luca said, quote, I don't know why I did it. I just did it. I saw it. I don't know. I didn't think about it before, right in the moment. That's just instinct. That is just pure instinct in that case. And to be honest, it's not like you would say, I mean, what do you expect Luca to say in that case? Like, yeah, when we broke the huddle, I was thinking, you know, I'm gonna drive to my left and then I'm gonna bounce it back to the right through my own legs to Maxi, who will be diving down, crashing to the basket, and he's gonna get an and one poster dunk. No, <laughs> not at all what he was thinking. It's just instinct in the moment, but the cojones, to actually go for that play in that moment. He's not the only guy to ever make that pass, surely. I mean, I've seen Harden do that numerous times, but in that kind of moment, in that game against that team, that was stellar, and that was his career-high 19th assist on the play. So phenomenal, phenomenal there from Luka. Uh, let me see. Let me see. I talked as well about how the Mavericks were able to force Giannis into a lot of difficult shots, how they got him one of seven from three. You're getting seven three-point attempts out of Giannis. As a defense, you're doing your job. Giannis ugly misses on a lot of those. You'll live certainly with the one he does knock down. When he does get to the foul line, which by the way, that's also shout out to Dodo, uh, Ding up Giannis about as well as you could ask. Giannis, yes, he got 34 and 13, but Again, seven three-point attempts, only made one, and seven of 14 at the line. And Dodo only committed three fouls on him whenever he had to guard him. You cannot ask for a better performance there from Dorian Finney-Smith, who had in his, uh, what was it, 11 rebounds he had for the game? I don't remember off the top of my head exactly how many rebounds Dorian had, but five of those were offensive rebounds. He was energy, he was everywhere, he was making plays when Dallas needed him to make it. So, tremendous there. I think as well, something that needs to be called out for this game is as much and as highly as we talked about Luka, this might be his single best 
game single best performance of his career to date although he had 42 against the Spurs in a higher scoring game and he had a brilliant game earlier this year against Sacramento I believe or maybe that was last year I can't remember the Suspended season is warping my perception of time and seasons. I have to keep reminding myself this is Luca's second year, not year three. But uh, he only had two turnovers in this game. He absolutely controlled the game against the best defense. And, man, I don't know. I don't know how, how much more you can say on that. I know there's this whole thing where you have Luca fans and Trey fans, AKA Maverick and Hawk fans, snipe at each other back and forth anytime anyone does anything. The players have nothing but admiration for each other. And at this point, it's just kind of like, you know, view it how you want it, but Luca is doing things that n nobody is doing. Like he's in the top five offensively in terms of that. He's, he's like third most points per game in the bubble. Uh, most, I think it's most assists per game and then top five as well on rebounds. He's doing all of this and he's had some tough matchups. I mean, you have to play Houston, you have to play Milwaukee, you have to play uh, the Clippers. And he's basically done work in every game. His worst game, I think scoring wise, is either 26 or 28. I think it was 28 in that first game against Houston. So he's putting in the work and it's paying dividends for him here. Now, let me see. This is also from ESPN Stats and Info. Luka Doncic had 36 points, 14 rebounds, and a career-high 19 assists in the Mavericks' overtime win over the Bucks. He is now the league, or excuse me, now has the league best 17th triple-double. I called that out before. Uh, Doncic is the youngest player in NBA history to lead the NBA outright in triple-doubles. That part I did not know, but it makes a lot of sense. The next closest was Magic Johnson with... 21 years, 227 days. Luca is 21 years, 168 days. Also interesting, I guess it's when they can officially crown him that because he's been leading for a while. It's not like that. I guess you can't crown him until no one else can mathematically pass him. So there you go. It's uh, quite, quite telling. Also interesting footnote here. Luca dropped by himself last night two more assists in a game than the entire Wizards team had against Philadelphia in their game. He's dishing. <laughs> he is absolutely dishing and dealing. 33.4 points, 11.6 assists, and 11.6 rebounds. Fantastic work there. Let's see. Uh, as Bobby Carella points out on Twitter, I talked about Luca with the pinpoint passes, getting guys wide open looks. He actually points out, and this is, I believe, according to Basketball Reference, that Luca, or actually, no, excuse me, this is according to Second Spectrum here. Uh, in these assists that Luca was generating, 19 assists, he got 35 potential assists that he created. 19 of them were actually converted. The average closest defender to the player Luca passed to was 5.99 feet away. When you're getting six feet of space, you're basically getting wide open looks. I think, in fact, for it to be classified as a wide open look, it's six feet. So your average is 5.99. Yeah, you're doing your job. You're creating space for your teammates to take as many good looks as they want in a game. So nothing, nothing but praise here. After the game, Rick Carlisle himself asked about Luca says, quote, I'd pay money to watch him. I don't say that about a lot of players, but he's really special. Luca's not only a great basketball player, he's a great performer. So what is going to be the kind of fallout from this, you might ask? What is going to occur now? What is going to happen as a result of this game? Are the Mavericks going to walk into their next game with a little bit more confidence and swagger? I tend to hope so, but you know, they still got a couple of games worth noting. Phoenix is 5-0 at this point, so you still gotta play them again. Hopefully you can do something which you haven't really done in three years and actually beat up on the Suns, although they're playing great and Booker is playing great with the first time in his career having some kind of meaningful stage to play on. So we'll see. But you should have had him the first time. Uh, let me see here, let me see. Oh, um, <laughs> make what you will of it if your team uh, on the Giannis to Dallas bus, if you think he's leaving Milwaukee potentially, and you think Dallas has a chance, his quote after the game might interest you. Asked about Luka's performance, he said, quote, Luka makes his teammates better. 
Talented, really talented. One of the most talented players I've ever played against. It's hard not to kind of think about and salivate a little bit at the thought of Luka, Giannis, and KP on one roster. That is absurd to think about. And Dallas has, you know, percentage-wise, a lot of great shooters to throw out there. But it does feel like a pipe dream. Like, I'm not going to try and, like, pump that out there. Like, that's a likely scenario. But I am certainly interested in the idea of it. If it does somehow come available, I just don't see it happening. But, you know, there's plenty of people who look at that and they're like, hmm, I wonder if Giannis is thinking about that now. If he's thinking about the possibility of playing with Luka and KP. That's, uh, that's pretty incredible stuff to consider there. But yes, very, very interesting uh, performance here. I think the Mavericks are going to probably roll with a little bit of momentum now as a result of this. I think that they've kind of calmed their nerves. Yeah, they beat Sacramento and they've already gotten a win this, uh, this restart in the bubble. But that win, while it was gritty, I don't think it was what they expected. They struggled mightily for a lot of that game. And as a result of that, I think it kind of threw them uh, for a loop. It's kind of one of those things where you're like, all right, well, we won, but we don't necessarily feel like we figured it out per se. We, we did better in the clutch. We performed in the clutch, but it didn't feel like a complete performance. And I think this is a much closer to complete performance here. And, you know, I didn't have him in my list for my X Factors, but Dorian Finney-Smith is starting to look the part. He has had several big games after the first game here. Uh, he's had 16, he's had 12, he's had, what, 20 and now 27, something like that. I mean, he has stepped up big the past several games. And this is a guy who, at, in his rookie year, Carlisle said he just gains more wisdom as he gets his ass kicked. Fair enough. He, he takes his lumps and he learns from it, and he is able to then turn around and convert it to a solid performance here. And finally, before I wrap up this down on the block show, I almost, well, post post game, whatever you wanna say for now, down on the block before we wrap this up here, this is just a short first edition. Uh, I wanna call out a fun fact from Dalton Trigg as he points out on Twitter. In 17 minutes tonight, Justin Jackson had six points, two rebounds, two assists, and two steals. He was a team high plus 13. He's had some nice moments. I'm. I'm not super optimistic about ultimately what he's going to be able to do in a Maverick uniform, but he is a guy I've been very high on at times, and uh, it's nice to see him perform when called on. Luka was a plus 12 in the game, and considering everything Luka had to do, you know, obviously you got to put a lot of stock into that. But all the same, Mavericks get the win. Mavericks are going to now hopefully have a little bit of momentum because at this point, they're going to have to turn around and in a couple of days, let me take a quick peek at their schedule here. Uh, let me see. I want to take a look specifically at their next game. They got Utah coming up, so that'll be a tough game. U Utah is still 43 and 27. Dallas is 42 and 30. So pretty closely matched there, but Utah is tough. They just took Denver to double OT before falling and Donovan Mitchell looks like he is starting to figure things out a little bit. Then you got the pissed off Damian Lillard, probably fighting for his playoff life if he's not, if his team still has a chance. So worth noting. And then you'll close out with Phoenix. So I see the stream got interrupted here. Don't worry, the backup is rolling. But uh, we are going to wrap this up. If you haven't already, drop a like on this video, comment below, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect, and remember, every legend was once a prospect.